They are very independent, multi-dimensional people. As you know, this whole twilight phenomenon has put the Quileute Nation in the middle of the domestic and international spotlights. And is that something that the nation embraces? Do they like all the, the people coming in, all the fans and all the attention? There's a variety of different reactions to this phenomenon. Some people embrace it. Some people aren't real sure about it still. Yeah. Some people are like, hmm. But for the most part, um, I think they've done an amazing job in uh, welcoming because they are one of the most hospitable tribes I've ever, ever met in my life. One of the things that is important to this nation is that the tribal members themselves can utilize this attention and this phenomenon to um, showcase the true culture, that their true story be told, and it be right. told through their art and their dances and their music and their food. Mm -hmm. And so that's exactly what we're here to do. When we come back, we'll have a lot more from La Push. First up, we'll see how Twilight has transformed the economy in La Push. And we have entrepreneurs as young as a four-year-old named Leilani who makes these beautiful beaded bracelets. From ravens to wolves, we'll head out to First Beach to learn the ancient Quileute legend of creation. And stick around to hear one of the Northwest's most ancient and complicated languages. Twilight Spotlight, I'm Naiba Reynoso. One of the most important things on the Quileute Reservation is the enterprise. From well-established businesses like the Oceanside Resort to budding entrepreneurs. Thanks to the Twilight phenomenon, business is booming. The tourism that has started here has kind of pumped up some of the bus local businesses. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely, and thank you for asking that. One of the things that is important to this nation is that the tribal members themselves can utilize this attention and this phenomenon to um, showcase the true culture. Fans flock to Quileute run shops looking for Twilight souvenirs, but once there have the opportunity to purchase authentic Quileute art. Several of the Quileute members showcase their art in the Oceanside Resort, and we have entrepreneurs as young as a four-year-old named Leilani who makes these beautiful beaded bracelets. Mr. Morgan Roth, one of our respected elders, linguists, storytellers, um, he makes these alder rattles in addition to these alder paddles. And this is a cedar bracelet that one of the Quileute members makes. And cedar is very important to this nation. In addition to some beautiful cedar baskets and woven cedar hats. 11-year-old Julia Ratliff is one of the youngest artists to have her works displayed. I wanted to have you look at these pieces that she does. She puts sand. This is authentic Quileute sand uh, from First Beach into these vials and then she puts Jacob on them or Team Jacob oh, and she's also them? turned them into these beautiful little necklaces with a paw print. How did you come up with the idea to do this? I watched the movie and I seen my cousin was doing them and I thought I'd beat some necklaces and put bottles on them with sand from First Beach. She's just an example of uh, the spirit of this nation. Again, taking what was put before them and turning it into something positive and something wonderful. So this is Jacob's Java, and we're here with Rhonda, the owner of this business. I understand it's a relatively new business that you opened. How did it come about? Um, I just decided that um, I needed to join the Twilight craze, <laughs> and I resigned my position with the tribal court that I'd worked with for about 17, 18 years. So it seems like Twilight, the quiet craze and everything has helped the economy here a little bit? And yes, yes. I, um, the little bit I've been open, um, I've met people from all corners of the world and that's the best part is um, meeting the people and watching them go crazy over the Twilight. <laughs> Don't go away because when we come back we'll have a lot more from the Quileute Reservation. Up next, we'll find out how Roy Black inherited a famous grandson. Then we'll sit down with tribal elder Chris Morganroth III to learn the true story of the Quileute. It's all just ahead on Twilight Spotlight. Welcome 
welcome to beautiful Thank first you. itch in La Push. Amazing. I know. So what can we do now? I got a great idea. Let's go look for some werewolves. Let's go. Are I love that idea. Me too. I'm Let's team go. Jacob all the way. Me too. Let's go. With his family name Black printed proudly on his mailbox, Quileute Tribe member Roy Black Jr. has embraced the title of Jacob's grandfather. So do the fans just love it when they meet you? What's that like? I eat breakfast in town and in Forks uh -huh. uh, once a week and I walk in there after this twilight thing, you know, start going pretty heavy there. As soon as I walked in the door, she said, you know, she goes, where's Crombie Jacob's grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, it, I, was, I was kind of embarrassed about it, you know, because there was quite a few people in there. Mm -hmm. There was a little girl in there, I don't know, she was probably seven or eight years old, and her, and her, her brother, probably about nine or ten. Right. And her mother asked me, she said, could I take a picture of you? you know? And the girl grabbed a hold of me and um, she took me to death grip, you know. <laughs> so what is Mr. Black's answer when asked, where is Jacob? Well, Jacob told, called me this morning and he said he was um, going fishing uh, because um, you know, when, when we get to rainy weather, the yeah. fish will start to run. So. And I taught him when he was a young boy that uh, to uh, not only respect respect the river and, and the fish and the ocean, but uh, take care of yourself, so. I heard in the Quileute culture that you have this saying that you only take what you need. That's the way I was brought up from my, mostly from my grandfather uh -huh. and grandmother, who was Tommy and Elsie Payne, who lived by the river called the Kalawa River next to Forks. Uh -huh. my, my grandmother used to weave these baskets so fine she would put the, um, the berries that she grew and that were wild around her place in a basket and weave it chef. My grandfather had these two big boulders on the river where um, she would put, put, the, uh, put the berries in. It's like a little cold storage. In the winter time, when we wanted the berries, she'd just go unweave the basket. Yeah, and, you know, here the berries would be nice and fresh. In the book Twilight, you're portrayed as werewolves, but your creation story is actually uh, transformed from wolves. The, the only thing I know is what you know. I learned from my parents and then from my grandparents is that we do come from the wolves. You know, and I hand that down to my children and my grandchildren. Sure. And now I have great grandchildren. You know, when people ask me that question, yeah. you know, if I get my go, oh. <laughs> Fictionalized versions of the Quileute creation story are easy to find, but we set out in search of the truth. Let's go see if we can find an elder that can tell us the true story of the Quileute. Oh, that'd be great. What do Let's you think? Go.